the form of it is, like is quite. Yep. Yep. No, it's white. So know that these have, even though they're made up of all nonmetals, when you generally think of things that are covalently bonded, they normally don't have high melting points. Ionic is normally a higher in melting point than covalently bonded things. But if it's a network solid, because it's one big molecule you're trying to melt down, uh, that takes a real high uh, amount of energy and a high temperature to melt these things down. When you do get sand hot enough, uh, it melts down into a, uh, a transparent material that we know as glass. Yep. How does it change from like sand to glass? It doesn't. I don't know exactly what happens with it. Um, somehow this thing will flatten out and become more two-dimensional than three-dimensional. But I don't know what bonds are being broken. I, uh, that would be a fascinating lesson on how glass actually is made. What happens? Oh, you need some magic? Okay. <laughs> Okay, this is my last thing for the day. How are we doing? No, we're doing pretty well. This isn't only one slide, it's a couple of slides, but uh, it's, it's not bad. If you've started studying for the review quizzes, and our first review quiz, which is on Monday, by the way, so know that that's coming up. If you haven't started looking at your review packets yet, I hope you start before Sunday. Before Sunday. Because <laughs> there's a lot of questions to look over, and some of them are easy, and some of them are not easy. Which packets is the first one? Oh. Well, no, you have to look at There's questions out of all four packets. Oh. There's a document on that in that folder that tells you what questions from each one to study. The review quiz, by the way, ten questions, multiple choice, and then on the back side there will be two to three free response questions. This is not real long. I, I give you a 25 minutes just like I do on normal quizzes. So we'll have, a, it'll be a normal quiz day. I give the first half to ask any questions that you have in a, at whatever time it is. I can never remember. 1, 30, 44, yeah. Um, but we'll start. Okay. But anyway, uh, I was going to say, there are questions about energy involved in dissolving. We did a whole chapter on KSP, the, the solubility of things that aren't very soluble. It really has its, its underlying character in this, even though we didn't talk about this then. Um, there are three things that have to happen when a solute dissolves in a solvent. One of the things that has to happen is that the solute has to break apart. And that takes energy. You've got to put energy in to break bonds. So the, we're going to call it delta H1 is the energy involved in breaking the solute apart. Now delta H2 is kind of a strange one. Delta H2 involves the solvent breaking apart. Because in order for the solvent to welcome in something new, it has the, the, the particles in it have to kind of get pushed apart some. So that requires energy too, because you're, you're either breaking bonds or you're breaking intermolecular attractions to get that solvent to break apart. So that's endothermic as well. So delta H1 and delta H2 are always endothermic. Then the last one, delta H3, is the interaction between the solute and the solvent. Normally, uh, if anything has a chance of dissolving, it's going to have some attraction between the solute and solvent. Now, attractions are kind of like bonds. When they form, uh, energy is given off. Nature tends to become more stable when attracted things can join together. So the total delta H, we call this the enthalpy of solution, is those three delta H's added together. S-O-L-N, abbreviation for solution.
So when something wants to dissolve in water, uh, if it's going to be a spontaneous dissolving substance, the delta G would have to be negative, yes? Now, what would delta S be for anything that dissolves? Positive. Yeah, you're breaking the particles apart from each other, making them more messy. Delta S is always positive. So um, if delta S is positive and the delta H is negative, it will dissolve for sure, because you'll for sure get a negative delta G. That's what the next slide goes into. If delta H is uh, the delta H of solution, this term right here, if it's large and negative, you're for sure going to have a negative delta G and it will dissolve. If the delta H is large and positive, uh, the delta H, if it's large and positive, that means the delta H is going to kind of dominate over the delta S and it's not going to dissolve. The delta G will be positive. That's, this is chapter 16 right here, which was about KSP. That was about things that didn't dissolve. You put them into water and maybe a little tiny bit dissolves and then the rest of them just sit there. Now I know that your question is going to be, okay, so if delta H is small, even if it's positive and small, uh, because there's a positive delta S there, uh, it, it'll still give you a, a, a spontaneous process. But what's the difference? How, do you, how small is small? Right? How do you know when, when it's going to be small enough to, uh, to have the entropy uh, you know, kind of dominate over it? I don't have an answer for that. And you're not going to have to answer those questions. Just know um, very generally that this term right here is a delta H and it's paired up with delta S to determine whether something will dissolve or not. Matthew? Um, is, the, is the change in H of the solution the change in H that indicates what it is? No, I'm talking about all these are that, that one right there, the combination of all three of those. Is the, am I answering your question? Uh, I just don't think I know what change in H3 is. Oh, once the solute breaks apart, like sodium chloride, if it's trying to dissolve, the sodium and the chloride ions have to break apart from each other. And the water has to kind of open up some in order for the sodium and chloride to come in. Both of those require energy to be put in, breaking up sodium chloride and breaking up the water so that the sodium chloride can come in. But then, the water is very attractive to the sodium chloride, so even though it took energy put in to break those things apart, the attraction that water has for sodium ions and chloride ions is great. So delta H3 is very negative. So overall, a positive, a positive, and a really big negative makes this thing a negative number. And so spontaneously, sodium chloride dissolves. Other things don't dissolve because their delta H3 is not negative enough. Where these two, because of breaking things apart, they're always positive. It really depends on the size of the delta H3 as to whether the whole process is endothermic or exothermic. Okay, a couple of terms, uh, terms that you'll be familiar with, one of them at least. Whoa, I don't know why it's doing that. Like last hour it was fine, something about... <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that way. Yes, like that. I know, but that's got the whole, they'll just move the whole thing. Oh, that, that's the new wrapper. That's right. no Dissolve in G? Yeah. Dissolve in G. The What's that? You have to be on the border, like on the blue part. I know, but it, it gives me the whole. Wait. If you click on Dissolve. Oh, it's double click. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. What? Then the, Why did you see a small little circle yeah, so on the, the side? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You might consider it, JD. Oh, yeah. It's a good it could be dissolved in J. Oh, Ooh. that's good. Yeah, yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> so, anyway, um, when we're talking about the solute breaking apart, that's the opposite of the lattice energy. The lattice energy has to do with ions joining together to make a an ionic bond. Well, this is the opposite. This is the ionic compound breaking apart. So, um, if you know the lattice energy of a compound that you're dissolving, well, that you already know now delta H is just the opposite sign. Remember, lattice energy is always negative because we're making bonds. This, the delta H1 in dissolving is, is that number but positive.
Then you got this idea of enthalpy of hydration. Uh, the two other delta H's added together gives us what we call the enthalpy of hydration. And if you would have brought your book, I could show you examples of it in the book. Oh, I don't know what you mean by that, but you don't have to explain it. I've been mean enough to her. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Are, we, are, you, are we your favorite AB Kim class ever? Yes, of course. I, I can't say. I see yes. I think that's a yes, yeah. yes. yes. It's not. Marie, because if the star kids will hear it. Yeah, that's why. You just, you just want to wait oh, yeah, that's thank you. Did you say that we are both your favorites? Wink, wink. 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 You had <laughs> geniuses, though. In your previous years, every year, we're fun. Every year, yeah. This is an amazing class. Love this class. Thank you. So, like, do we rank the top five? I can't say anything. We rank the top two for this year. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Can't say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, last slide. A, a very difficult example. So the lattice energy of sodium iodide is negative 686. And it's an energy, so it's kilojoules per mole. And then the enthalpy of hydration of sodium iodide is negative 694 kilojoules per mole. What would the enthalpy of solution be for sodium iodide? <laughs> no, I said it was a very difficult example. You must have to really think into it. Yes. It's like half of the answer were piece from that. Yeah, so you're used to these kinds of problems. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking over kids' shoulders while they were doing that exam, and I thought, what? Are you kidding? So one of my friends told me like you were like staring at her paper. I actually got to get over it. I wasn't judging her. I just want to look at the questions. So this problem, here's our, our uh, lattice energy. That is the opposite of delta H1. So if I just take that sign and make it positive, then that is delta H1. And then this thing right here is the second two added together. <laughs> so what is the enthalpy of solution? Well, it's going to be uh, positive 686. We're not putting that sodium iodide together, we're breaking it apart. And then that number we don't mess with, it's negative 694. That's it, negative 8. Anybody have any questions about this? I would like to give you other examples of it if I can uh, um, maybe get some time in the next couple of weeks just to make sure that we understand this one. This is, seriously, we had that whole chapter 16. It really was founded on this whole enthalpy of solution principle. I just didn't do it then. Okay, we're done. Cheers. So we have to close up. So ask me someone, someone different every day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.